Praise be Jesus and Mary. This is one of the times in Scripture where our Lord very clearly shows us and demonstrates that he is God like his Father. This is exact, exactly one of the reasons, the primary reason, if you will, why he was condemned to death <coughs> when he was asked to profess in front of the high priest, are you the son of the living God? And it's a mystery that's actually revealed at the very opening of sacred scripture in Genesis in a very hidden way. But those who understand the mystery of the Trinity, it's not, it's not hard to see, you know, when we speak of a little bit, little bit of from the apologetics, whenever we speak of God in a generic way, we always refer to God the Father. It's one of the things in reading the scriptures, if it doesn't designate uh, who the person is, we just talk about God in, in a generic way, it generally always refers to the Father. And so when we talk about in the opening, uh, opening of scripture, it actually says, you know, in Genesis, it talks about how God has creating the world, and he spoke a word. And that word, as we know, is Christ, the Son. And it also tells us that the Spirit hovered over the water. In the first, very first verses of Genesis, we, fee, we see those of us who know about the mystery of the Trinity, that's the first thing, as it were, that's revealed in sacred scripture. Although for those who, to whom this is a mystery, they still don't see that. They don't understand it. And yet it's one of the things that both with the Old and New Testament is slowly re and gradually revealed to mankind is this mystery of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And it's one of the things as we continue to celebrate the, well, really from the birth of Christ all the way till his death, ending with Pentecost, it's one of the things that's pr very pronounced in that mystery, especially in the Paschal mystery, from the death until the end of the Paschal season, when we celebrate the uh, Pentecost, the descent of the Holy Spirit upon us all. This is a great gift that we're told, and one of the reasons that uh, the Holy Spirit, and it's, I think this is an interesting point given uh, from our Lord, our Lord is always striving to do the will of his heavenly Father. This is something, of course, we're to imitate, but one of the things that's given to us by our obedience to Christ is the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's one of the things that's pointed out in the Acts, early in the Acts of the Apostles, that all those who obey God are given the gift of the Holy Spirit. And something to strive for, to, to pray to the Lord to know God's will for us, for ourselves, and then we need to pray for the grace to do God's will. Uh, that knowing is one part, the doing is another, and we need to pray that we not only know God's will, but that we strive to do God's will. And it requires us to pray, to do penance, and even to do works of charity so that we might obtain these graces from our, from our Lord. <coughs> As we continue with our journey with, I'll even say Our Lady, I think it's the best way to do our Lenten uh, observance, to observe it with Our Lady, to ponder the words of Christ our Lord this day. As he says, he is about, he's imitating his Father something that we're all called, we want to call ourselves children of our Lord, is something that we ourselves need to ponder in our hearts, is this imitation of our Lord obeying his Father. Even when it costs him, even at the agony of the garden, this is what we find him doing. And he teaches us it's not wrong when we have our crosses and our difficulties and we find them very heavy to bear. We can come to our Heavenly Father and ask if it's possible that these be taken away. But always with that same condition that our Lord himself taught us in that same garden. When he prayed for the, that chalice to be taken away from him, he asked for it not according to his will, but to the will of his heavenly Father. And this is what we all have to strive for. You know, and as I say, it's not wrong to ask the Lord to take a cross or his cup of suffering away from us, but we should, not pray, we should end that prayer that not, not in accordance with my will, but the will of our heavenly Father, with the will of Christ our Lord. Let us ponder these words with Our Lady in our hearts, that as she herself strove to do, fulfill the will of God in her life, offering her son as a sacrifice, uniting her will to the will of her son, ultimately to the will of the Father. Let us ponder these words, and with her, strive to imitate this submission to our Heavenly Father, to be his true children, imitating his own son, 
so that truly we may call ourselves adopted children of our Heavenly Father, whom Christ has taught us to do not only his will in heaven, that not only that his will in heaven should be done, but even on earth, this earth, this body of ours. <clears throat> in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.